Hey, so continuing with the dark side series, the dark side of real estate, because somebody actually, he actually pinged me on YouTube with this comment and he said, why don't you talk about the dark side of real estate? So my team said like, hey, let's talk about Middle Earth. And we talk about the dark side. So it's a play on words, but I want to give you like the other side of real estate as well. But with each video, I'm giving you a solution as well. How can you actually address it, right? So in this video, we're going to talk about the dark side of buyers. Don't forget to hit the like, subscribe and bell icon. And if you want to work with us, there is a link below. Hit it, click it. My team will be in touch and we can start sorting out if we're a good fit for each other. Show real first. Hey, welcome back. So we're going to be talking about the dark side of buyers in this video, okay? Now, it's going to be a little surprising for you because these things aren't really that dark and they're very, very, very easily solvable, okay? The number one thing that you might actually face as a challenge from buyers is they don't have money. Okay, now this is generally addressed to the younger agents and on this side I'm going to give you solutions, okay? Okay, there might be buyers who are actually out there window shopping, they might look at the wrong advertisements that might tell them that look, it's 0% down, it's, uh, it's like 1000 months installment plan, I don't know, stuff like that, right? So they actually come to you right? and it's, it's not dark, it's okay. Everybody can dream and everybody can start with the real estate process at any stage. So I'm not gonna discourage that if you're a buyer, don't worry. Just speak to a kinder, nicer expert advisor who's gonna take you through the process. Just be more upfront with them in the beginning so they know how much time to allocate to you, right? Now, if you do actually find one of those buyers and you're aggressive and they did not tell you uh, aggressive in sharing information with them and they did not tell you in the beginning that they're not really really looking for a property this year maybe they're just getting some research done under their belt so that they're ready for next year that's fine it's the onus on the is on the real estate agent the expert to do some kind of a strategy session okay now I always advise that you should do this session spend about 30 minutes to one hour and do the session with the person to actually explain to him or ask him where he might be in the buying cycle right now there's some poignant questions that you can always ask but I don't encourage those poignant questions like like super aggressive questions I don't encourage those that you should be asking those questions super fast super hungry super like how much money do you have right my managing director long 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 years ago he always said look don't be too rude about the money in fact, the way you ask about the money is also very critical. But I always say like, look, ask them about their life first, okay? Ask the buyers, okay, about how many bedrooms they want, which locations they want, what kind of house they want, what kind of layout they want, uh, who's going to be owning the property, what do they want from their ultimate, and then ask them the money question, okay? And also then the way you ask the money question, I'll give you two examples. This was my managing director. He said, just ask them, what do you want to allocate towards this investment, okay? You understand the word allocate? It's better than asking them, what's your budget, right? So don't say budget. What's your budget? Don't say that. Just say, how much do you wish to allocate? Okay. I'm gonna use another person's example here. Uh, Jordan Belfort, the Wolf of Wall Street, he has another way of putting this. He says, just for suitability purposes, what's your current financial situation like? Right? Sangha, if I ask you how much money you have in your bank account, you'll be like, oh, that's very personal, right? But if I say, how much you want to allocate to your new shoes? Maybe I, you'll tell me something. If I ask you, just for suitability purposes, what's your current financial situation like? You're most likely going to get a very good answer. I'll write that down here, okay? So, suitability purposes, okay? Sounds almost 
kleptocratic. Like, who the hell knows what you're actually saying, right? It's actually quite, quite the word. Just for suitability purposes, what's your current financial situation like, okay? Number two, okay? No clear direction, okay? Guess what? Easily solved. Here, when you ask them and do a strategy session with them, is where the clear direction comes from. You're meant to give them a clear direction, okay? Some buyers come into the market with clarity in their own mindset. Some buyers don't have that clarity in their mindset before, okay? It's your job, your role to actually help give them that clarity, okay? If you want to work with expert advisors that help you get direction, there is a link below. We'd be more than happy to guide you through the process of buying or selling a property in Dubai. Don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and bell icon as well, okay? Number three, they sometimes commit and back out of deals. This happens less, and the way you actually prevent it is you do your paperwork. So two was also here, it's actually point. Do your paperwork properly, and then you will find that no buyer ever backs out from you, okay? I don't have this problem at all, okay? When buyers commit, Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to go back a little bit, okay? Look, a lot of agents, when they feel, this is how deals happen for me, okay? Uh, with my team that are working with my VIP clients. We never pressurize or put pressure on a buyer to actually make a decision and buy. We wait until they've actually gathered enough information from the many different projects that they've seen with us based on the strategy that we've defined for them to automatically find the best property. I'd say this to my buyers, we'll never sell you a property, we'll find you the best match, you will select the best property and we will in return, you will invest in the property, we'll invest in your life and your future. One of the ways to avoid a buyer backing out is before you actually get them to sign the dotted line. Go back to this. Go back to the strategy. Tell the buyer, we identified one, two, three, four, five as main things that you needed from the property that you buy. Does this property satisfy those four things that you need? If the buyer says yes, you're okay. The buyer says no, don't go forward, okay? Last but not the least, some buyers do this. They make commitments to block units. I would always say like tell them like if they are blocking units either do it with money okay this happens in the Dubai market or there is a one or two day time limit and after that it's gone it's done okay so what's the dark side of the buyers and how to deal with them I've given you solutions number one sometimes they don't have money and that's okay I don't want to discourage buyers let them come through do a strategy session explain to them and understand their requirements and understand where they are in the buying cycle so you can then advise and guide them accordingly if they don't have clear direction which is sometimes very difficult for young agents to handle give them the direction get a senior in help the buyer find direction number three Sometimes they back out of deals. Look, they back out because they weren't sure when they were buying. Do the strategy session again. Uh, don't come up with the, define the strategy criteria again that you already did before. Understand that they're on the same boat, on the on the same page with you when they sign, when they actually sign. Okay, get them on the same page. All right. Last but not the least, don't let buyers block units. If they do, tell them like, look, you've got to pay a deposit that you lose if you don't go forward with this transaction. Or the other thing you can always do is tell them, hey, all you need to do is end up blocking it for an hour or 24 hours or 48 hours, right? Time limited so that they can make an informed decision if they need time as well, that's fine. Don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and bell icon. It does something to the algorithm. And if you want to work with us, have a smooth uh, you know, buying experience in the Dubai property market, a five-star buying experience, reach out. We'll be more than happy to help you. There is a link below. Bye for now. Hey guys, thank you for watching the video. I hope you liked it. My name is Fad Daud. I've been doing this for 15 plus years. I started in uh, Toronto, Canada in 2006. And since 2007, I've been based in Dubai and doing real estate in Dubai. Look, if you're looking to work with me, there's a form below and my mobile number. I do paid consulting. You can also uh, get help for, uh, from my team for services. If you like the video, press the like button, press the 
subscribe and the bell icon and share it with uh, your friends who you feel would be able to benefit from the content of this video. Last but not the least, I'll repeat, me and my team's role is always going to be to help and select the best property for you. Your role will be to invest in that property and we will in turn invest in your life and your future. Bye for now.